Today in Matt's class, we are going to talk body language. All right, so what we are talking about today is body language, and this really is everything. This is what's going to be the thing that kind of takes your visual storytelling to the next step. And here's the reason why when you are drawing your characters, body language is everything. So if you've got someone that you're drawing, let's say they are waiting for a bus. Do you have your person standing like this, waiting for the bus? And then they're, they're waiting, they hear the sound of a loud truck, they turn their head, is that the bus? No, it's not the bus. Okay, I'm still waiting for the bus. So you really need to think when you're drawing your characters, what is it like when a person waits for the bus? They're probably like, oh my gosh, are they leaning on something? And just like, oh, they had this hard day at work and they just can't wait to get home, you know, kind of thing. So you really need to infuse the body language into what they're doing. When they're walking down the street, are they totally, are they bummed out and maybe uh, someone just dumped them, you know, this relationship that they, that they just lost, that they were just really into? Or did they get the job that they were going for and they're totally like, yeah, I got it. And they got their mojo on, right? Body language is everything and you need to infuse that into your drawing. Now, some of you might be saying, wait a minute. so." I've got to think about proportion. I've got to get all the proportions right. If someone's standing like this, then I need to be able to draw my characters at all different angles, like as if the camera were here, as if the camera were there. Then on top of that, I've got body language and I got to be thinking about expression and all of that. Yes, you do. And it's actually easier than you might think. And with a little bit of practice, you get more of the hang of it. But I want to talk about how you can start to infuse body language with different camera angles. So I wanted to do something a little bit more challenging. I wanted to draw something that um, I don't know how to draw. So let's say we're going to have someone running. But not only is this person running, uh, let's say this person, it's a camera view from the top. We're almost like a drone shot looking straight down. We're going to show how to draw someone running from up above. James, do you know how to draw someone running from the top of you? Yeah, I haven't done it. <laughs> you know what? Together, we are going to figure it out. So here's what's up. First, before we get into the angle, let's talk about the body language of someone running. So a lot of times what you want to do when you're drawing your characters doing something, sometimes you want to actually stand up out of your drawing chair and get into what that is. So if you have to draw someone punching, you know, you, you don't want to make the mistake of just having someone sideways and then they just have their arm out like this because that's not really a punch. Get up out of your chair and think about it. Like you might want to, okay, well maybe I wind up and then boom, I go across like that really kind of, oh, I see what I'm doing, how I've got this foot forward and I'm twisting into it like this. Like, okay, that's really cool. But if you can kind of figure out what the pose is and you can figure out the body language, that's going to help you quite a bit. So here's what I might do first. If the challenge is, or if let's say I'm doing storyboards for a movie and the director says, here's what it is. It's a drone shot from above. We see someone getting chased down a dark alley. Okay, no problem. So what I might do first is I might try to figure out, let's say here's my character here. Here's the head. Now, what is it like to run? You know, when someone runs, it's not just Super Mario where they're just like totally running perfectly like this. Like, think about it. Get out of your chair. And the first thing you might do is like, oh, okay. oh, I'm leaning forward. When you run, it's like you're putting your body in front because you're running. So if you were to keep your body like this and run really fast, you would probably fall backwards. And the first thing you might notice is people lean forward. So here is my rib cage here. And this is obviously just from the side. Then what happens uh, if you were to look at someone kind of from the top, usually even when someone's walking, they have one arm in front and then the opposite leg goes in front this way. And then when they walk this way, the opposite hand comes out like that. And it's kind of a balance thing for when we walk, we kind of do this thing. When we're running, we do the same thing, but it's actually more dramatic, right? So when you're running, you've got this leg like this. And then to balance that out, you've got this arm like this, and then you kind of switch like so. If you did the same leg and arm, that would be really weird because you would walk 
down the street like this and if you were running it'd be like oh my gosh you know try, like doing the robot as quick as you can obviously that'd be really hard to do but we've got this cool twist balance thing going so what you have you've got one arm coming out in the front and then this other arm kind of goes back and tucks in like so and then the hips kind of twist where you've got the opposite leg this arm goes up like this, so this leg is going to come back. I just ran out of room, but then this leg comes in the front. And then there you have it. I kind of ran out of room there. You could even have this more dramatic and really kind of going behind it. I ran out of room, but something like that. Now that I kind of have, this is just kind of a quick stick figure from the side. If the challenge is to draw someone from the top, I honestly don't know how to draw someone from the top view, but we're gonna figure it out together. So lightly, I'm going to draw my stick figure, but I'm gonna take this and really imagine it kind of from the top down, looking straight down. So if I start with this, I've got my head, which is like this. Now, because my character is leaning forward, my spine is gonna be maybe kind of curving a little bit like that. And one shoulder is going forward. And one shoulder is kind of behind. So this arm could be going in the front, kind of like so. This arm is kind of tucked back a little bit like this. But then again, what's happening when you are running, if this arm comes forward, it's this leg that's kind of going like this. You're kind of doing this twisty thing as you go. So if this is the arm that's going forward, it's actually going to go like this and we can see more of the back. Again, this character is leaning forward a little bit, but we're gonna have this thing where the uh, pelvic bone is going like that. This leg is gonna be going behind. And then this leg is actually going in front. You can kind of see here. And in fact, we have the knee and foot. If you, if you look at this straight down, the foot is actually a little bit in front. So maybe we'll have the foot kind of like that. Now, right now, this looks goofy. This is like a weird, I don't even know what this is. It's some kind of weird pretzel, but I'm gonna stick with it and hopefully it looks better as we go along. Let's figure this out, all right. So step two is the meat. We are gonna add the muscles. So. Here is the top of this person's head. Here is the neck. Here's the, sh the shoulder. Let's say this guy is ripped. He's got some good, even though he's getting chased. Maybe the people chasing him have crazy weaponry or something like that. And so even though this guy is pretty ripped and pretty strong, he's like, yeah, I should probably run. Running is probably, getting out of the situation is probably the smart thing to do. All right, something like that. That's, I don't know, it's looking a little bit better. Uh, now it's at least, uh, I think it's looking all right. Now it's time for the details. Let's put him in. So this guy is running uh, really fast. So maybe we've got his hair kind of from the top. Maybe it's kind of wispy and it's, it's not like really long, but maybe he's got kind of shaggy hair. back behind him a little bit. You can see just a little bit of this guy's nose. He's running. Okay, he's got a shirt here. Uh, it's a relatively tight shirt. He's a muscle guy.
wears an Apple Watch. This is Jack. Might be a Fitbit. <laughs> Counting them steps. Shoes. It's got some tight jeans on. Not someone get me some duct tape because this Malacca is ripped. <laughs> so it's a little strange, but here's the whole point. When you're drawing comic books, when you're drawing storyboards, when you're drawing manga, it doesn't always have to be perfect, but I feel like anyone could look at this and they would definitely understand what this is. Um, clearly, is this the greatest thing I've ever drawn? Am I super proud of this? No. And maybe we can put some shadow in here. The light's kind of coming off in there. Hopefully, clearly, it looks like someone from the top view that is running down an alleyway. Maybe it'll help if I had some little bits of garbage. Uh, maybe there's a, a trash can. There you have it, your person running from the top. It's not perfect, but this is how you want to start building. You want to start taking anything that you can imagine up here. Of course, if you ever can find reference, that's great, but you don't want to fall into the trap of, especially if you're creating your own comic book or if you're doing storyboards, you don't want to have to rely on always finding a picture of what you're drawing because if you're doing storyboards for a car commercial, you might find you know, an image of someone opening a door and then an image of someone sitting down driving the car. But is it always the same person and is it always the same car? So you need to start being able to take loosely what you can imagine up here and being able to translate it onto paper and not be afraid of, you know, if you've got an idea for something where let's say it is a crazy angle like this, you don't want to be afraid of like, oh yeah, that would be really neat to draw that but that would really be hard and difficult. And I've never done that before. So you know what? I know how to draw someone running from the side. So I'm going to do that again. You need to start breaking out of your comfort zone and start taking anything, even if it's crazy and you've never drawn it before, challenge yourself to take what you can imagine up here and draw it on paper. Listen, at some point when you were a kid, there was the letter K and you had to draw the letter K and you had never drawn it before. And the letter K seemed really difficult and complicated and it had all these angles and you weren't sure if you would ever really be able to draw a really good K. But then at some point you mastered it and now it sounds hilarious, like drawing the letter K, like that's not so hard. I do it all the time. But at some point you didn't and it was actually a really complicated thing to do. Now K is awesome and is your friend. That's true of everything else. This is your new letter K. Get to know it, get to love it, and start drawing your characters at different angles. Yeah.